Viewers, say hello to my running mate, Colonel the Corn Snake. Unlike most politicians, he is not, let me stress, not slimy. But, like most inside the Beltway people, he is, however, cold blooded. Now, Colonel the Corn Snake will certainly be able to have a great influence in swing states like Virginia and North Carolina because, though well, that's where he comes from, it's his home story. And being a corn snake, Presumably, he'll do well in the farm belt as well. But Colonel isn't here to help us learn about politics today. <laughs> Instead, he's here to help me learn a little bit about one of his close personal friends. So let's start out taking a little bit of a closer look at Colonel. You can see he does come adorned with some very lovely colors here, having just shed recently. His skin is particularly shiny and colorful. Excellent, I might add, for camouflaging with the fall leaves. And if we take a closer look at Colonel, especially in the head area, you'll notice he's missing a few things compared to your average Joe Sixpack. For one thing, being a reptile and not a mammal, he lacks the handsome hair that we have. Also, you might note that a close look at the side of his head shows that he doesn't have any ears. Snakes like Colonel are deaf. He can't hear sounds that go through the air. Colonel have two eyes there on his head, but in all honesty, he has a problem with what's known as the vision thing. He can only see things well if they're really close up, uh, seeing far down the road, not so hot. As I'm sure many of my viewers at home know, Colonel also has his own maverick way of doing things, and that is he does not smell using his nose. Instead, he smells with the tongue. Keep watching and you'll see every once in a while he will stick out his tongue to sniff stuff. Instead of having the sensory parts for smell in the nose, his mouth, known as the Jacobson's organ, forgive my use of that elitist term there, but the Jacobson's organ in the roof of his mouth is what collects the smell particles that he picks up with his sticky, wet tongue there. And to help him smell a little better, snakes like Colonel have forked tongues. It's much for the same reason that, say, we have two ears or two eyes. The brain is able to compare what this ear hears and what this ear hears to better get an idea where the sounds are coming from. Colonel's forked tongue does the same thing with smell. He can compare what this smells to what this smells, and he'll know, aha, uh -huh, something smells tasty over there. Now, let me clear up another misconception that the mainstream media likes to spread. Even though he is called a corn snake, Colonel does not eat corn. He instead dines on delicious, delicious mice. Mmm, delicious mice. Sorry. Colonel eats small animals, mice, or maybe even small rats. He swallows them in one big gulp. When you're as busy as him, there's no time for chewing. And besides, his teeth really aren't any good at chewing anyway, so there you are. And. Colonel can go a very long time without eating at all. As I mentioned, he is cold-blooded. His body temperature changes all the time, so he doesn't really need as much food. He doesn't need it to keep his body warm the way we do. And while you won't find corn snakes like him in Connecticut, his snakely cousins here right about now are beginning <laughs> uh, Sorry. They're starting to hibernate. Winter is too cold for reptiles in Connecticut, so they'll find a warm place like a hole in the ground, in a log, someone's basement, and sleep it off till springtime. Well, I've asked Colonel here today for a few reasons, and one of them is so that we can do a fair and balanced look between him and another one of my friends. I'm going to replace Colonel inside his special bag here. I get a lot of questions about Colonel. Oh, can he breathe inside that bag? Yes, he can breathe inside his bag. We keep snakes like Colonel inside the pillowcase for a couple reasons. Partly because it does help keep him warm. As I said, he's cold-blooded. But mainly, being a snake and being super-duper skinny there, if he was just kept into a box, he might be able to get his skinny body out. And man, did the staff at WHTV complain the last time that happened. Now, to compare and contrast on the issues, let me call on another animal friend here today. 
Yeah, man, okay. Also kept in a pillowcase. Man, who tied this thing? <laughs> All right, it, it was me. My next friend here comes from a little farther away from Europe, and his name is Cliff. All right, Mr. Cliff, you ready to come on out? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Come on out, Cliffster. Yes. At first glance, Cliff here might appear to be another snake. <laughs> but you'd be mistaken. Cliff is instead a lizard. He's part of the family of legless lizards. He's a lizard, he just doesn't have any legs. Some of you at home might be thinking, okay, a lizard with no legs, duh, that's a snake, right? Au contraire, mon frere. Now, while he does, does appear to be a lot like Colonel, and he does have some similarities, there are many important differences. Now, being a reptile, some of the fundamentals about Cliff are the same. For one thing, he is also cold-blooded. He also has the scaly, and let me stress, non-slimy skin. But there are fundamental differences between a lizard and a snake. One of them you won't be able to see just by looking. It has to do with his skeleton. Being a lizard, his skeleton does not have as many small bones as the snake, so he's not quite as flexible. And if we were able to get an x-ray of his whole body, we'd see a definite difference in the tail. Colonel the corn snake is probably a little over three feet long, and his tail only a couple inches. Whereas Cliff here, his tail starts somewhere around here. It's okay. Just like other lizards, his tail makes up about half of his body length. And he's called the glass lizard because, like some other lizards, he has the world's grossest self-defense mechanism. It's okay, little guy. If another animal eat him and grabbed him by the tail, he could make the tail fall off. Our younger viewers at home, please don't try that yourself with an arm or leg. Probably not a great idea. But then the other schmo is left just holding a tail while the rest of Cliff tries to slither away. And then after a while, he can indeed grow back a new tail. Now there are some other differences between Cliff and Colonel. For one, he does not smell with his tongue. It turns out there are some lizards who have the forked tongue who smell with their tongues just like snakes do. For example, monitor lizards, such as the Komodo dragon. But other lizards smell with their nose just like people do. Another key difference you might notice is if you look at his head, Cliff does have two small holes, one on either side of the head. Those are his ears. So unlike Colonel, Cliff is not deaf. He can hear just fine. Reptiles don't have the sticky out part of the ear that people have, but he does have ears, so he can hear. And there's another strange difference, and that is with his eyes. Now, his eyes are open right now, but Cliff has something else that Colonel does not, eyelids. Snakes cannot close their eyes. They presumably have to sleep with their eyes open. But lizards can close their eyes. Cliff is not doing that now. And that's one clear way, if you see the eyes closed, to tell that's no snake, that's a lizard. All right, Mr. Cliff, do you have any final word for the voters of America? Apparently not. He's not one of those rhetorically gifted politicians, I guess. All right, I'd like to thank Cliff and Colonel for being my co-animals of the month. And now, let's get ready to dare to experiment. Oh yes, good boy.